Hello, everybody. This is Rebecca Freedom, and this is episode number 42, Heard Not Seen, produced by John Beethan, but with a special producer today, Justin Froze. He's not only my producer, but also guest. And today we're going to be talking about all the things that drip. (laughs) Of course, we struggled with an actual title and we'll come up with it towards the end. But we're going to be covering topics like sex, love, romance, coupling, uncoupling, and all the joys of the intertwining we do as humans and bodies. So Justin... Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Good to be here. So he was saying to me that he's been wanting to be able to be on the air and really share. And, and this is born out of really early morning, middle of the day, late night conversations that we've had with each other mm. where we, one or both will call generally with just a, a level of distraught confusion, mm-hmm. some sort of barrier and we just sort of yeah work it out yeah yeah um yeah so what can be worked out tonight (laughs) (sighs) all the things that drip all (laughs) so one of those things and this is this is it's almost really fun to talk about um having had experienced it but now being on the other side is uh you're a musician Hmm. and not only a musician but like the sort of embodiment embodiment of like the resonance and being able to pick that up so i know for sure um, what it is to be played like an instrument. Hmm. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ooh, I didn't know I had that octave. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't realize there was percussion there. Please, more percussion. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a polite way of asking for cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> or thrusting. More percussion. <laughs> <laughs> And and then there's this result that happens when, you know, sometimes you mean to pick up an instrument and only play it for just a moment. But that instrument comes back and is like, play me more. Hmm. Play me more. Mm-hmm. Play me more. And you're like, I don't, I don't want to play you more. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Every instrument has its... Uh its voice and has a story to tell and i noticed that with instruments they they each have something they do best something Mm. they most want to do you know Mm -hmm. like you could have like an old martin and it just sounds great to to finger pick or to to just strum simple simple chords on but they all sound so sweet and it's like enough you know and then you can have like something like a good all or a tailor that has all this range and you can just do all these things on help us non literate <laughs> guitar so literate t- yes these are guitars you these were- are oh, yeah okay. <laughs> these are brands of guitars yeah <laughs> yeah but they all have their different design their shape and everything and so mm. so like the song between us the song between all people i mean there's always a song a song being a story in the form of the heart speaking Mm. and sometimes yeah people make us sing Mm. they make our hearts sing you Mm. know and sometimes they make us freaking (laughs) right make us scream that yeah it sounds like john cage and john cage was this like performance artist who used to put Um, wrenches and nails on the piano strings and just bang Mm -hmm. bang them yeah yeah some people you approach with curiosity and then Mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's this like cacophony this noise Mm -hmm. inside of you that just and you're Mm -hmm. just and then you become this frenetic mess and then we call each other (laughs) (laughs) totally but i mean this is a great analogy and let's keep going so i remember one time in college, I've been studying guitar a long time, and um, I studied classical guitar in college, and there was a time when my teacher was helping me get a new guitar. And so he had overnighted this $10,000 classical guitar, mm-hmm. called me over at night, and said, like, come over, you got to try this. Mm-hmm. So I'm checking it out, 
I had maybe played some guitars like over 5,000, but there's something for an instrument of that quality and craft where it like just speaks on its own. Mm. Like, you, you don't have to do much. Like it plays itself like this. It literally does. Like the littlest of effort sounds so good, right? And so... The, okay, I just like... So there's just, oh, it's just like mm, honeycomb. Just like when you like crack a honeycomb and you see like that sweet nectar like ooze slowly out. ooze and mm-hmm. roll out. And I just want to like have that moment again where you said it was it was so well crafted mm-hmm. that it almost it was just effortless mm-hmm. and it's playing like and I oh we're gonna we're let's we'll keep stretching and like getting this the pulse to this analogy but Mm -hmm. i really invite everybody who's listening to like apply this to their own love story Mm. yeah Mm -hmm. mm. those things those Mm. times and those connections when it just fits and it clicks Mm. and you're in rhythm you're in sync Mm. like you play one thing you like a hit right it's an event in time and these are the words and the actions of our attempts to connect and so you you strike this one chord and the way someone responds to it, it like lights them up and you see that and you're like, yes, this is great because I love that chord. Like I just play it and work, look how much it more. does for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then other other times you play a chord and someone's like, that's pretty bland. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like, can you're you playing j- me wrong. <laughs> like, can you jazz that up a bit? You know, but there, there's something so musical about relationships i mean even this idea Mm. of call and response which is a musical thing where i say something and then someone else responds or another instrument responds it's this conversation and so you know sometimes we'll throw something out there and we can tell that it really lands with someone and that feels so good because it's like they get it they catch it they get it in time they almost get it before they heard it and then there's these other times where you throw out an idea and it just lands on deaf ears, you know, or something comes back and you're like, huh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you, um, I definitely know having sat down with a friend who was kind enough to even place my fingers on the guitar and begin the process of teaching me how to tune, mm. not play, mm-hmm. not even play, but to tune and to, to get just the physical dexterity of pressing one string which when you don't have calluses on your fingers Mm. is so painful Mm -hmm. it's like this brand new experience and i feel like when you want to be a master lover or a master musician those early moments of even just learning to tune Mm -hmm. to tune right and mm. to feel the pain of the strings of like, mm-hmm. this is awkward. It's not quite fitting and I'm not. And then all of a sudden, like, I remember hitting like an A chord mm. and, and I was like, oh, music, ah! harmony, yeah. harmony. Sound. And, and I would say that the struggle is that we go through our awkward selves and we're coming into our own attunement and hoping that we can play music with another person. Mm. Oh, my gosh. And as a teacher, uh, I teach music. Like, I learn every time I teach that people need space to explore. People need space to fuck up. They Mm -hmm. need space to try something and be okay that they didn't get it. And, and of course, you know, we all have our responses, uh, our trained sort of impulse responses to, you know, what we perceive as us making a mistake. And Sometimes when that response is so big for someone else, when learning to play, I just try to say, hey, you know, like, it's okay, you're doing well, like, keep trying. But when you mess up and get off in the music, instead of just getting flustered and losing it, try to keep listening to the song, keep track of where you are, Mm. and don't let this getting off for a moment, missing a beat or something throw everything just end the whole attempt mm. right like stay engaged and try to go oh there it is oh, and get back on let me say it again stay engaged and when you say that what i when i think of is when people try to tune to perfection oh i'll find this perfect person 
this right chord, this melody that will just suit me mm. forever, right? Or whatever, mm -hmm. that, that perfect thing versus tuning to exploration. I'm just going to explore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try. I, and my, something that came through me is it's not that we don't, it's not that we are without fear. It is that we choose to be fearless. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that the fluster, I often find that people don't try new things because their, sh their, their benchmark is this arbitrary perfection. Too high? Yeah. Perf like, or I have to just get this. And, hmm. you know, what is, what is it to be, uh, oh, to master it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, mastery involves so much discipline, which is engagement, right? Is mm. that... Mm. Mm -hmm. And also knowing what's going on, like I, I'm enjoying the analogy here to music, obviously, and teaching and such. And I try to tell students about the practice of practice mm -hmm. and the art of practice and how it's not, you know, practice makes perfect. It's perfect. Practice makes perfect. So when we go to work on something, we have to do it mindfully and with attention and awareness and pay attention like where do we keep fucking up just notice <laughs> where do you keep snagging and then isolate that and work on it and then stand back a little back two steps back like play the whole measure and then iron it out and then st step five steps back like play four measures and there's this method to it so i don't know so does mm. this apply to relationships mm. can we be this methodical or this i mean is this just the work the sort of mo of of craftsmen of people that are really hands on and engaged and creative. I want to let's take them on the slow dive. <laughs> We're going to be mining the depths here shortly, so I encourage everybody to get their tea, their whiskey, and just prepare to go down so what you're saying is that can we be this methodical can we bring this level of mindfulness and i love what you said to the snag to the snag to the place that we get caught and have to come back to right and it absolutely applies to relationships because we pattern out things over and over, and unless we are methodical and mindful of that snag, of that parental pattern, of that limiting belief, of that that place where, you know, oftentimes um, people do because of attachment, people will think I don't want to be suffocated by a relationship, and that becomes their defining characteristic, and so they find either suffocating relationships that they can get out of and constantly justified and look, I'm right, look how mm. free I am for mm. letting go of the suffocation that's always or vice versa, no one will ever love me, I'm all alone in the world, and isn't that just like, uh, that is, I think that is the um, the unskilled melody. Mm. trying to find trying to find its h harmony and again i don't really know mm. between melody and harmony please if you will <laughs> sure i mean life is so musical i mean uh, if you think of music it's basically organized sound mm. with meaning attached <laughs> like, <laughs> so good well yeah and and this is <laughs> This is explored when you're studying music and you're on an academic level and even just pondering it philosophically is like, what is music? And it's organized sound with meaning attached. And so within that, there's, there's all these ways to describe the different components. And melody is uh, usually the, the part that's out in front that defines it, that, that has, is a single thing, like a voice or like a clarinet like it's not multiple things happening mm -hmm. it's one thing mm -hmm. and it's um usually the focus mm -hmm. and it's the thing it's the main character right and harmony is two or more things happening at once um things happening at once so i mean i think dissonance is a type of harmony right mm. 
because we just have an association with harmon harmony as harmonious as like peaceful and lovely and fit perfectly together but harmony is two or more things happening at once so um so the awareness yeah and the practice so it's always really good to illustrate to take from metaphor and move to experience and i am happy to share from the analogs of my life Mm -hmm. i often do but because (laughs) you've he volunteered. <laughs> he, he's tribute. Mm-hmm. He's given tribute <laughs> to come on to the podcast. I'm wondering if in this moment, there's any examples that you have of those um, relationship as harmony, but it was dissonance, right? Where it was two things, but the, I don't know how you would say, they just were not an they were not vi- they weren't uh in sync or um right and this is we feel this all i will i will say that we all feel this sense of i love this person more than they love me they love me more than i love them the timing is off i'm a little bit too old they're a little bit too young they're a little bit too this not enough that right and we're we're um constantly playing uh goldilocks too hot <laughs> too cold Hmm. And trying to find are just right. Hmm. So I want to know about your two hots <laughs> <laughs> and your two colds. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are we mindfully attracted? Like, like when, when we find ourselves attracted, drawn, magnetized, pulled towards, something, someone, something in someone. Do we always really put our finger on it? You know, do we really know what it is? And so there's often this phase of exploration, right? And this is like courting or dating or getting to know someone just interacting. And so, yeah, all that to say, I'm thinking about a somewhat fresh experience where I was so drawn to someone so drawn and I wanted to know them and I wanted to be known by them and I wanted to um, offer them so much from the garden of my heart you know I just wanted to like be like oh look at this and this and this and I've discovered this this right but they didn't they didn't really take the bait they didn't seem interested but what happened is they would express that they were interested and with such a sincerity, such a good intentioned, um, tone, you Mm. know? And, and so that led me to believe that something was a certain way and an interest was there, that there was, there was this reception and this desire. And as time goes on, the lyric, the lyric was there. (laughs) <laughs> the lyric, mm, right? The lyric. Right? I'm interested. And then the melody started playing, and you're like, these don't go together. These, <laughs> Right. So the harmony and the dissonance is like, right. um, when you, we could just focus on the things we want to see and the things we want to hear mm. and mm. miss all this peripheral noise or, or that's that's meaningful talk about meaning of sound it's like the the noise that's there is meaningful but we look past it because why i i feel like we really often don't initially see what's there we see what we would really like to be there and what we hope to be there and we're looking for this thing we're looking for mm. yeah we come and with it, our own filters. We come with our own shades and filters yeah. and um, suppositions, hopes, dreams, expectations. And are we wrong to? No, no. Yeah. And 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 I and here's here's a really. And I always like to bring neuroscience into it just for a second yeah. because we have bodies. <laughs> uh-huh. Our bodies are doing this, right? Like our infinite soul and being is out doing whatever it wants, imagining great 
winning of lottos and the great lover and having the great lover and being with the gods, Zeus and Dionysus and, you know, all of Um, them. Sure. Yeah, playing. But our bodies are like, okay, well, here I am in this, I have this great mighty power, but here I am in this, you know, condensed form. And, and in that form, I have been entrained through experience to have a filter of what is to come, the predictability of what's ahead of me so that I can feel safety through familiarity. And it stops us every time from actually relating to the person who's showing up right in front of us. We, the first person we see is ourselves, all the selves that we haven't let ourselves see for a long time. And it feels so good to have them let free, reflected, The kids are out of the box. The Mm -hmm. cats are running wild. And you're like, I'm attracted to that. I'm attracted to that. But then all, but then again, it settles back in to what you reconciling those parts of you. And then you're left with the actual message being delivered, which was, I swear I'm interested. Let's hang out. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. I'm sorry. I'm busy. (laughs) Right. Yeah, it's like, what what are the cues we take? And are we looking at the right cues? Are we watching? Um, what, what even truly measures these cues or receives these cues? And, and I want to stay with the body for a second because you refer to the body in this way of it it, you know, storing information, it telling us things. The body is really an amazing instrument. And the body is a speaker too, mm. as in it's this thing that broadcasts, that that amplifies or, or projects out the source or the signal behind it. And so thinking of, of this relationship that I was referring to initially, early on, I experienced simultaneously this intense des- desire, like, I want to ravish this woman. Like, I just want to like... She is like so everything I want, and it's so amazing to have her in she front does of all me. The things that dripped, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to have her in front of me and to have her attention and all this simultaneously. That and this feeling of something of red light, mm. you know, of something stopping me. You know, it's not like a face in my hand or like a chain on my arm, but there's this feeling I've learned to notice happening in my body in the speaker of my body that that says oh wait mm, nope mm. and uh <laughs> so of course i didn't want that to be the case and i didn't get it and i didn't want to stop and inquire because the desire was so much more pleasurable and so i focused on the desire for her instead of really saying hey wait what is this that this is not just a small feeling and not just an isolated feeling like a one, one off. This is coming back. What is this about? What's trying to tell me something? So when in and of itself, the having of the desire is intensely pleasurable, right? We see, um, that attraction, that, that thing that just, uh, gets our bodies to light up. Mm-hmm. Just start starts to where we go from our slumped figure to our proud royal stance, and we're like, I want that thing, and just having the desire. But when, and you said there was that little red light in the background. When did just having the desire stop being enough, and you wanted more than the the desire? Does that make sense? Nice segue, yeah, because you and I have explored that a lot of. We experience someone, we love that experience, we want more, Mm. we try to find a way to to let that be known and ask for more, uh, directly and indirectly, you know? (laughs) Like all sorts of vague texts, like, hey, what's up? Which really means like, (laughs) I want you to pursue me now. (laughs) What what are you doing today? (laughs) Yeah. Like, me? (laughs) Happy Friday. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey, happy Friday. Will you please come over and bone me as it's Friday? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, get, I mean, 
It's hard to be direct because it's so vulnerable to be direct, you know? Mm -hmm. And here's, again, part of this puzzle is like, how soon do we expose ourselves? How soon do we let be known what is our truth, you know? And from another relationship that didn't really ever take off, there was... Well, don't don't rush past it. (laughs) Just one more level of depth. How soon do we let it be known our truth? Our truth. That which we, and by telling our truth, we are in full exposure of the wants, the needs, the neuroses, the bliss, the joy, the just all the um, components that are just buzzing through your body as you as you're going through these levels of attraction and then you're with another person is one of the how soon to be vulnerable yeah Yeah. and how much to show and and what is it in us that thinks that the other person couldn't handle that or wouldn't want that you know who are we really guarding are we guarding ourselves? Are we guarding them from our truth? What games are we playing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've even noticed in myself this, like, oh, I don't I don't want to burden them with, with the, the, all these things I'm feeling, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, it's just going to be too much trouble, you know? And it's like, maybe if they really cared, they'd so appreciate knowing something that they weren't picking up on or maybe that they were kind of but didn't know what it was about and it's like we make these assumptions you know before we even explore and and again in learning an instrument that just totally cuts off all of our progress and all of our trajectory you know because if if you always have this opinion about what you're capable of or oh well my sister is really talented but I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not then you're just kind of sealing your own fate and I think that's my challenge as of late is to in the beginning stages of relationships just stay open and not get too intense because I want to make this truth known mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and part of that's just part of my story to this like newfound eagerness to be like I can express myself mm. and I want to and I and I can <laughs> articulate hey hey hey, hey. Yeah. so if you want it right now better make them show you how you know <laughs> ready or not so ready okay so here as as we're talking you know there's moments as in artistry where you'll you'll feel a chord rise in you as a writer for me mm. it's words that mm-hmm. like start to rise up and i feel of course consent being given that it would be fun and interesting in the um uh in service of vulnerability to i can tell our meeting story from my perspective Mm. And you from yours. Mm. Yes. Okay, interesting. (laughs) This is pretty juicy. You always seem to like to keep it juicy. (laughs) All right. Like to lead the listeners in, you know, give them a gentle back rub like any good seductress. Okay. Just just come over for tea in the back rub and, you know, night goes on. (laughs) Which is very much our story. (laughs) Uh Yeah. Um, It was a tea invitation. It it was tea. I believe it was tea. Mm. And uh, and another uh, piece of the world on YouTube, there is a very cute video called Tea and Consent, Hmm. um, which I recommend, which is basically, if you understand uh, not forcing tea down someone's throat when they don't want it, (laughs) then how hard is it to understand consent? Hmm. Just mm-hmm. that's a very brief synopsis of it. So um, we, through the venues of various social media platforms, we've c- crossed each other's paths. I believe 
one of the path crossing cro- crossings crossings was on Tinder at some point, mm-hmm. you know, in my swiping days, mm-hmm. <laughs> which are not quite behind me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're yeah. probably still in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Never know. And beside me or underneath of me. Right. It's Tinder after all. Um, but I just knew you as a Facebook personality more than anything. I think I crossed you there and then I saw you on Facebook. Instagram and we too. Mutual mutual friend. Yeah, so there were yeah. several triangulation mm-hmm. avenues of... of um, and plus, you know, you're a personality. Oh, am I? <laughs> yeah, you are. You're like this online, like I play music and go on tour and am generally breaking hearts across the world. <laughs> <laughs> like any good musician should be. Um, already famous in small circles. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably bigger circles than mine. And for me, um, I don't really know the, I, I believe the same was true for you. We, you just knew of me because of those triangulated social media. Is this you passing the torch? Yeah. yeah. Like the torch well, um, gosh, to be candid, uh, my, my experience of you through, uh, your Instagram and some of your videos, I was just like, who is this kook? Like this, <laughs> this, this lady is like all over the fucking place, you know? And, um, still am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, on the note of how we experience people in the various, uh, avenues, like that, experience of you like say just text right because we like swiped on tinder and then um and then seeing some of your videos like seeing this image of you animated Mm -hmm. and making sound right so i take all of that and i and i go oh like that's who she is and honestly i wasn't inspired to connect for i think i don't know a a year year. yeah like (laughs) a year or something um and then i don't i don't I don't know why, but I found myself being curious Mm. um, about you. And I don't think it was because anything you directly did. Mm. It was just something was coming to me about, like, you should, like, you know, like, what the heck connect with this person? Just, you know, I don't know. It's hard to place what that was. We don't. Sometimes there's a guiding hand or, or like, again, you're in your own. Yeah. So who knows? I know. Um, But like we were talking about earlier, like knowing, being aware of how you're attracted to someone and what you're really seeing versus seeing what you wish is there Mm -hmm. or what you think is there. And so I love though, because I really love you and appreciate our friendship and our our exchange of ideas. I love that. Despite all of those, like, <laughs> eh, what the fuck? What the, so weird. there was something <laughs> that pushed me to reach out and say, Hey, you should come over and let's, let's have tea and chat or something. It was, you know, the, and the, I think the framework of it too, um, just like the really, because again, you don't know it until, the, um, many months have passed since we met each other. And so hindsight is certainly going to shade the telling of the story from the original event, but I'll try my best to capture Mm -hmm. again and capture those original moments. Yeah. So again, just over Facebook messenger, there was the invitation. It happened to be, I believe it was the 30th of December. Mm -hmm. So very close to the new year. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been in this habit of not making any plans for like big events now because they just sort of ha- they just sh- tend to show up and I I allow myself to be pulled mm-hmm. towards something versus like let me push myself into I just yeah just and um I was also in the beginning of the early stages I would say of surrendering running my life through masculine energy mm. and being really curious what would it be like to be more feminine and just to, um, which means I changed my mind a lot and it's always been true or, and it's not that I've not been feminine. I've just been, um, in denial of it. Oh, I haven't acknowledged it. So in that time, in that moment, that's when the invitation sort of came from you. Hmm. Um, 
I was also just, there was a flirtation with this other guy. And I know I brought that to our conversation where I was really frustrated. And I just sort Mm. of like, was like, oh, I'm over it. And I think you were at a moment where you're like, oh, I'm sort of over this Hmm. other guy girl so it was just this interesting sync up Mm -hmm. and um and then you were saying that really lovely home oh yeah yeah Yeah. overlooking the lagoon yeah yeah Yeah. passing torch okay (laughs) (laughs) um oh yeah and just it's like something you know and you hear but like is so much richer once you experience it over the last year I've really rediscovered the fact that you don't know something until you're face to face with it. You just don't. Mm. You don't. And it's like the in person is like the analog record, the vinyl, the the thing that's warmer that has presence that has way more information than can be digitally captured, you know. Mm. Uh through these like limited little channels and so yeah the conversation was juicy it was like we were talking about all sorts of things and and i found that in that connection in time i liked you <laughs> like i liked i liked wh- who showed up there and mm. honestly i struggled to feel like the rebecca i got to experience was the rebecca that other people got get to you know I hear you, I, this is something, and thank you for this. I hear all the time. Really, I hear all the time. Oh, that the social media, me or whatever, yeah. because I have this depth and range. Like there's this, yeah, I totally. from the sinner to the saint, from the profound to profane. Like I'm all of these things, mm-hmm. and but the thing is, you only get these tiny little snippets and cross, cross sections online, mm-hmm. depending on my mood on that day. So I, I know I'm completely <laughs> schizophrenic via digital media. <laughs> But, like, hopefully there's, like, a general, um... Uh, Essence, or... Yeah, there, there's there's something that strings it all together in person. I do, however, and I did the night um, I came in, when I'm nervous just meeting somebody, I talk a mile a minute. I'm, yeah. I'm like, syncopated. I'm, like, jazz. I'm, like, terrible jazz. Really? <laughs> I remember you, at one point, your, even your hands got involved, and you're like, whoa, 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 you were over here, and you were over here, and this is... This is like, from my perspective, this is like your natural ability to be like a symphony conductor Mm. is like, because people will throw a bunch of words at you, but you don't just like let a word or a phrase necessarily just pass through and it's blase and it's not attended to you. um, I believe you said you're the nurse of the soul, a soul (laughs) nurse, right? (laughs) And so when, when things are being communicated and that night was true, it was like, that it was like you were able to conduct this fast speed into like a slower pace. Mm-hmm. And in that slower pace, there was like a pulse that started to like come out of it from me sitting across the room to sitting when the fire got started to, you know, you being like, I think I'd like to kiss you now. Oh no, not kiss cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was really, there was just, um, there, I felt for me, it just felt like there was an ease to the unfolding. Yeah. And like intimacy has such a range and not it just being you and I Mm -hmm. alone in a house and like a fire going over Mm -hmm. an amazing lagoon view, but like, (laughs) but like, I mean, the setting was there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But like the exchange of ideas is intimate, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And I love the language of ideas and nuances and articulation. And I can tell, I could tell that, I mean, yeah, as a writer, as a coach, as a poet, you know, as a comedian, like articulation is like one of your main tools Mm -hmm. and craft even. So there was, uh, I think, a mutual appreciation that you know it's like when someone sees that thing about you and appreciates it it's almost like you got invited to the safest like intimacy ever because you didn't have to like 
be vulnerable, like put something out there like that was risky to earn intimacy. Mm. You were just you and someone really got it and really received it and let you know that. And um there's the sweetness to that intimacy. Yeah. 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 And I, I've just always been so touched by how touched you are <laughs> by some of the words that come out of my mouth that that many of them are not preconceived, you know, they birth in the moment. I like roll on the floor with delight sometimes <laughs> and just like, like just ecstasy at just some of the phrases that come out. And I haven't captured any of them, except I have ripped off several of them <laughs> <laughs> and, and made just enough of an edit. <laughs> yeah. To make it your own. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So I, I think that part of the juice here is really, I mean, I, without getting, uh, you know, sloshed in detail is to say that the night unfolded for what it was. And then um, we we definitely made out and there was, from on my end, there was like chemistry and connection. It just felt electric. It was like that electric moment of, of like, okay, well, are we, I always, that, um, where you go to bed and you think, oh, I'm, are we just going to cuddle and fall asleep? And then the the body takes over, right? <laughs> like for me, it's particularly, I feel electricity like move up my spine. Mm. There's like this, like this, I don't know, general arcing of the back that happens. And then my, it's it's like a dance. Like I, I get danced in those moments. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was like, again, just the new, uh, the, uh, novelty hmm. of meeting you, having this setting, mm. having that like intimate exchange of ideas, and I feel like my body just went into like um sp- to carrying them on, but non verbally. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. there was a sharing of ideas, and then um, yeah, it was really it was really sweet and safe and then and then we slept and you snored (laughs) yeah sorry (laughs) I don't know I should get that looked at it was more of a purr (laughs) oh that's good yeah I I hope it's just a purr yeah and then breakfast and more conversation and and so on and then it went and then the uh and then for my end then the um San Andreas fault shock <laughs> followed afterwards too. Well, what I remember you saying by text sometime within the day after that you left is was something like leaving your presence is like very noticeable, like it felt like an exit from a womb or something, mm-hmm. which was really sweet and touching and. Um, yeah, super touching. So, is that the San Andreas fault you're referring to? <laughs> no, because we we did have that really sweet thing, and then you had your gig, and then we like rolled into like celebrating New Year's Eve, and it was like mm-hmm. yay and jazz hands, and all of it was nice. And and then I did the thing that I think most that we all sort of just knee jerk reaction do is search for context. Yeah, right. Search for like. Whoa, I was just blown open, had this intimate experience without having the language of even knowing that that's what happened, right? Yeah, yeah. Like some neurons were being rearranged. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then it was sort of like me checking back in for context. And I think that you were in a place where you're like, oh, that was all nice and everything, but that, that'll do. <laughs> and I. <laughs> I know. And this is the <laughs> ongoing conundrum that. Uh, that I hope some listening will appreciate the articulation of is that there's sort of this kiss first and ask questions later thing sometimes and this like, well, I was just trying it out or like, well, it just happened. And uh, my heart just goes out to everyone. I've, that's, uh, no, I don't want to say that I've done that too, but that's been on the other end of that with me. And and gosh, it should just go out through sheer compassion and understanding. But thankfully, as as it were, thank you, universe, uh, 
I've been on the other end of that recently where someone finally let me know, well, really, I kind of pushed them for the clarity, <laughs> uh, that us making out and them spending the night was just this kind of like, well, I was there and I thought, I guess, why not? And I'm like, <sighs> okay. So for me, that was furthering an emotional connection that was confirming an intimacy that was these things I wanted that I'm sure many have wanted with me when it, you know, organically happened. And here I am on the other end being like, ah, so that's how that feels when someone tells you weeks later, oh, well, that was just, you know, I was just whatever. I don't know. I didn't want to say no. What? <laughs> and, and, but, oh. but, but, but knowing this, and this is the pain of knowledge that, that turns into wisdom is like, what, like, how do we proceed now? Do, do we, do we swing over to the other side and get so careful and cautious that we ask about every little thing? And go, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? And that's that search for context that sometimes, as you and I both know from our <laughs> daily uh, conversations yeah. that uh, about the loves in our life, that mm -hmm. that this sort of anxious, mm, neurotic, Very neurotic compulsion to have the context, have the meaning, have the answers can sort of create this San Andreas fault. It can contribute to it. Because one person's like, ah, oh, I don't... Yeah, for whatever reasons. Whatever, it doesn't... It's not... Don't mind why it's happening. Why is the wrong question, right? Like, why doesn't he like me? We had this moment. Or, like, whatever, if you're on the receiving end or the giving end of, like, oh, I was just trying that. Or, oh, God, I wanted it to be something other than it is. Um... I want to bring it back to like, I think you said, I don't know, how, how do we deal with that? How, am, I'm well, paraphrasing. How, how do we, knowing, knowing that, that, that wondering, the questioning and the impact of it, how do we, I guess, not be over contextualizing, over cautious, over like, hey, so like, what did that mean to you? Or, you know, like. Why, and why are we so addicted to having that meaning before we can just be and just enjoy someone and just see what unfolds as we're being ourself? Yeah. And, and as, and I'm, as we sort of round the corner of our conversation for the evening, I, I want to bring it back to this one essential part that you really touched on and it was so beautiful and that I would say has, has been the, um, redemptive arc of our exchange is the truth hmm. right is oh, i think there's been a handful of times where we've like tried something and you're like oh that didn't quite work and or i've tried something and like that didn't quite work and then time apart was spent and a recalibration of things but the recalibration returned to this place of where i could hear your truth and you could sh and i could receive it and vice versa we we're able to sort of come to that place and I think when you're able to do that it's because you're you're not afraid of your own truth hmm. you're not afraid of it you're just like you this is it. what I feel in the moment and guess what it's not a vow an oath it's not forever I know for there's moments that my the waves of emotion I feel like the anger or disgust or whatever I feel um with the partner that I'm with, like sometimes they'll come up and in the morning we've been weeping together and by night we're laughing mm. all within like a 12 hour, even six hour period. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think what happens is we get so fixed that this will be the always and forever that we figure, Oh, there can only be one solution and one truth that truth is this fixed object. And it's not truth is the ever changing wave of being present with the sensations as they come up. And like you said, music is organized sound that we give meaning to and the waves of our life, the, the, the emotions we feel emotion to move out are the wavelengths that we're giving meaning to, right? That we're, we're giving meaning to. So the 
the depth of invitation here is to say, yeah, we all get hung up on like, what is our truth? And how do I even begin to get through the fear or the entrapment or the oppression to speak it, to sing it, to be Mm -hmm. your motherfucking harmonic, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like go on and preach. (laughs) Yeah, to Fearlessly. just yeah, put your voice out there and sing that melody, even though no chords are happening right now, and trust that it, you know, gets heard. And if someone gets it, oh, someone that follows along in music that just hear, knows where you're going and can accompany that, you know, and then you can trade and they can speak and you can, like, that's, oh, it's such an amazing thing. But if you don't ever put your truth out there, sing your melody, Mm -hmm. then how will someone know how to follow? Be intimate with your heart and all the truth that it's speaking. And by virtue of doing so, you will draw these deep intimacies into your life, romantic and otherwise. So my invitation to you, and thank you for listening, is that if you are in a place where you know there's more for you, you know that there's this song inside of you that wants to come out, and you know you want to be able to really live, speak, and sing your truth, I invite you to reach out to me at RebeccaFreedom.com. That's R-E-B-E-K-A-H Freedom.com. Justin. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Thank you all for listening and be set free.